Hello and welcome. My name is Athena, and this is the Seedling Stitch Knitting Podcast. I am a knitter, a crafter, and a knitwear designer coming to you from Vancouver, Canada. And in this channel, I chat about my knitting projects and designs, and sometimes crochet and sewing too. In this episode, we have a theme which will be my knitting, crochet, and sewing plans for the year of 2023. If you are a returning viewer, you might have noticed that I haven't been posting videos as frequently as last year, and I just want to give you a short explanation and sort of set the scene for this episode. So I have been putting a bit more effort in my Chinese knitting channel. Just in case you don't know, I'm from China, and I also have a Chinese knitting channel on Bilibili called Xiao He Lao Bian Zhi, and it has become quite popular over the past three months. Since I started it, I reached fourteen thousand subscribers, and that's like ten times what I have here on YouTube. And meanwhile, my YouTube has been like the opposite. I feel like it doesn't really show my videos to people anymore. Well, without feeling too demoralized about this, I try to figure out why. And I think that's probably because I knit many projects that are not popular or even known to most English knitters. For example, I knit from a lot of Japanese patterns. That are widely available in China with the translation, but these patterns haven't been introduced to the English knitting community, and also the English knitters are probably more used to knitting from popular patterns on Ravelry. Well, I do understand that we knitters probably would want to watch podcasters talking about projects that they are familiar with, they want to knit or they have knitted. But I'm not going to change what I will knit just because that's popular or that could get. Me more views, and I really want to sort of protest against this knitting monopoly by the YouTube recommendation algorithm, and I want to push the boundaries. I really want to introduce the fascinating world of Japanese crafting patterns to you and the awesome Chinese yarn. So in this. Make plan video. I am not going to select a single pattern by Bedinet or the popular ones on Ravelry. Not because they are not good. It's just. That I don't want to contribute to this monopoly anymore, and I really want to bring you something new, something refreshing and different. So I hope you will enjoy my content, and I'll start talking about my make plans. So I will start by talking about the sweaters I'm going to make this year. My first sweater plan is actually almost finished, and I am currently wearing it. This is the Gansi Ganser from a Norwegian pattern book, this、uh, magazine by the Sentinel Scarn yarn brand, and their two two zero two issue. And the pattern I'm knitting is this one. So this is what I've been working on since the beginning of this year. It seems like it's almost done, but if I stand up, you will see that I still haven't finished the bottom ribbing, and I have this much yarn left. I will just finish knitting the ribbing and using all of this yarn, and then block and wash so that I will have the final finished garment. The yarn I'm using, there are two types. This main DK weight yarn is from China. This is the brand. That I find they have quite good quality, and I've used their yarn quite often. The company is called Hui Gui Xian or Love Yarn in English, and this type of yarn is called Xi Wu or Cherish. This is a cotton and wool blend yarn. It's not a single color. If you look close, it's mostly like a sage color, green or blue, and there is a thread of purple, which I find quite interesting. Then this. Mohair is the Kate Silk by Drops Studio, and the colorway was North Sea. And I found these two yarn make quite a lovely color combination. If you look close to the knitted fabric,、uh, the mohair gives it quite a good halo, and the silk in the mohair gives a little shine. The original pattern calls for the double sending and the tin silk mohair, which are all the yarn from 
the sandy scar and I find these two yarn gives me the same gauge. So this international yarn combination substitution works quite well for me and quite interesting. I knitted the smallest size of the sweater as I found that all the sandy scar patterns are quite oversized and this has already been a nice relaxed and oversized fit for me. This is a drop shoulder construction with some short row shaping on the back. Just everything fits pretty well. In terms of modification, for one thing, uh, I shortened the sleeve. If according to the pattern, I would have knitted another section of the moss stitch or seed stitch above this cable and garter section, so it will add it probably another 10 centimeters on this sleeve and this sleeve has already been quite long you can see it's on my hand and it hasn't been blocked so i don't want my sleeve to be like that so i think this is the perfect length for me another slight modification was that i was watching another chinese knitting podcaster talking about a book about Gansi sweater knitting and i learned that in the traditional Gansi sweater knitting some knitters would intentionally add a little section of their own pattern into the sweater and that difference in the pattern sort of act as a signature of these knitters and marking the uniqueness of this sweater that is just made by themselves. And I find that idea quite interesting. And since I am knitting against this sweater, I want to make a small mark of my own on this sweater as well. So I just did a very simple uh, modification. According to the pattern, all these cable patterns should be like an arrow facing up but i just modified this one so that it's pointing down so this little difference of this arrow cable pattern would serve as my own signature of this Gansi sweater. So that's my first sweater knitting plan, almost done. Moving on to my next sweater making plan, and that will be one of my own design. And I have knitted a few rounds. It's like this now. This will be my second sweater design, also a top-down round yoke, and I'm going to call it the pine and fur sweater being in the same series from my pine and fur hat. So this is my pine and fur hat. This is a pattern that has already been published on Ravelry. I designed it in last autumn, I think. And the hat was knitted bottom up, whereas for the sweater, I do prefer top-down sweater constructions. So I'm flipping the pine and fur pattern, but this is a completely different cable chart uh, because the gauge is different, the yarn is different, and the rate of increasing is different on the yoke compared to on the crown of the hat. So it's just the same inspiration, but completely different design otherwise. And in the sweater, it features the pine pattern as well, is this one. I still need to increase a few more rounds for this pine tree to grow up. And this is the fur cable pattern over here. And between the pine and fur, there is just a blank filling random pattern. I think it kind of looks like a seedling, which refers back to the name of my channel. And the yarn I'm using are all from China. It's also from the Love Yarn Company, but a different type. This is their 100% wool yarn called Ji Dong or Heartbeat. They don't have an English translation, but it means like heartbeat. And this is their Mohair Nylon yarn, which is quite an affordable mohair. And I'm holding two strands of this fingering weight wool yarn and one strand of this mohair yarn. Uh, there are a lot of options for yarn substitutions that you can easily get wherever you are in the world. I only get the yarn because I love the color. I like this intense color of green that they have. So that's a design plan. And apart from this design, 
I just really like the theme of pie and fur and I'd like to expand that to a few other options. So I'm also going to make a summer top version of this. And instead of making these all cables, I'm going to modify that into more of a lace. And for my summer top, I've already decided up on the yarn, which will be the lean from Sydney Scar. And that is a linen, cotton, and viscose blend. And it's quite a beautiful and summery yarn. And apart from a summer top, I'd also like to make a summer camisole out of this pie and fur inspiration. So instead of doing a round yoke for a camisole, I'm having two options for the design. One option would be that I do the shoulder straps in the pine or the fur pattern, or the other option would be just doing a regular stockinette and probably I-cord camisole over the chest area. And then around the waist, I would put a round of the pine and fur lacy version of the pattern. And the yarn I will be working with will be another Chinese yarn, and that will be from the company Shenglian, or in English, Lotus Yarn. They have a 100% linen yarn, and they kindly offered to ship a camisole amount of this linen yarn to me and let me try it and make some design and we're going to collaborate on making a kit out of this and also I'm going to publish the pattern alone on Ravelry by myself so just to be purely open about it and next up we're still in the springy time and I have another springy pattern that I want to make from this book and that will be the jewel scanser this one it is a top-down round yoke lace pattern design knitted with a single strand of their tinsel mohair. The yarn I've already gotten from last year and it's another Chinese yarn from a different company called Bian Zhi Ren and this type of yarn is called uh, Cloud Excellent Mohair and this is a 66% kid mohair and 34% nylon. This mohair do have a lot more fiber content compared to the Love Yarn mohair that I purchased for the green pine and fur sweater and this is quite affordable compared to like the tin silk mohair so I got a sweater quantity out of it well I am a bit worried that whether this would meet gauge for the sweater because this is not as fluffy as the tin silk mohair would probably give me a tighter gauge or a more transparent fabric so I will make some gauge swatch and see. And then after this spring project, we arrive at summer. And for summer, I have a crochet project plan from a Japanese knitting magazine. Keito Dama is a Japanese quarterly knitting crochet magazine. And it features not only the knitting and crocheting patterns, it also brings you information about the knitting community around the world yarn festivals, events, yarn factory, spinners. So there's a lot about knitting culture that you can learn from the magazine as well. And in China, we have the translated version of the Keito Dama, which will be published like three months later. And I have ordered a whole year of the Keito Dama magazine and I'm really looking forward to it. And recently the cover of the spring issue of this year of Keto Dama has been released and I was immediately attracted by this yellow crocheted slip over. Well, I've only been crocheting for a short amount of time since last year in summer and I haven't crocheted any full garment yet. It's mostly because I find a lot of the crocheted garment are aren't very practical or too fancy for me, but I think this design on Keto Dama is just at the balancing point between too fancy and too boring. And I've also had the perfect yarn for it. So I've gotten this Chinese yarn 
It is a variegated yarn uh, with 75% wool and 25% nylon, also from the Bianzhi Renshou. And the name is called Rosy Clouds, and I've gotten two skeins of it. Initially, I was planning to make those ultra luck scarf out of this but when i received it i find it's in fingering weight and i really don't want to knit a full ultra luck scarf in the fingering weight yarn so it's been left there alone for a while until i found that this crocheted slip over is also made with fingering weight yarn and i think it will look really nice to do that in the variegated yarn to make it more interesting and this color is also quite springy summery so I found the perfect project for using this yarn and next up uh, we are probably around autumn and I have a farewell project for the autumn the project I'm going to make is the Ophelia slipover or vest from a Japanese pattern book called the farewell knitting Ecologue by Japanese designer Toshio Kishida and a yarn studio in China offered the kit for this pattern and these are the original yarn that was called for these are the Isiger Highland wool and the Isiger Alpaca one in quite a few different shades and it's really nice that they separated the small amount of yarn so that I don't need to buy a whole skein of yarn whereas for the whole pattern I would probably only need 10 grams or 5 grams and they could also do this to make a few more kits out of this so that more people can make this beautiful pattern and the colors of this project is quite dark and low saturation I think it's quite perfect for wearing in the autumn with a shirt so I will try to finish it by late autumn if I'm being too optimistic then as the weather gets a bit colder I have some plans to make an iron sweater and an iron slipover I haven't decided on the pattern yet but I'm really inspired by some pattern from the Kato Dama winter issue in last year and I really love these cable patterns in these sweaters or slipovers or cardigans I haven't actually knitted any Aran style sweater and I'd really like to check that box and I've also selected the yarn that I'm going to use and these are the Donegal yarns that is carried in Wet Coast Wolves the yarn store that I'm working at in the store we carry three types of the Donegal yarn the Tweedy Yarn Company from Ireland we carry the Soft Donegal which is a 100% merino yarn and I've already tried this yarn actually in my wall garden project by Erika Tokai I really enjoyed the Tweedy yarn it's a very rustic woolen spawn wool and when you are knitting with it there are little pieces of plant matter in it that just makes everything feel very natural and very wild and the little dots on the tweed yarn uh, looks just so interesting so I really enjoy the tweed yarn uh, and this motivated me to try the other two types of Donegal tweed yarns in the store which are the Kilkara tweed a 100% wool tweed yarn and also the mohair tweed which is a merino and mohair blend that has a nice halo on it so i ordered a sweater quantity of the mohair tweed yarn with the store and a slipover quantity of the Kilkara, one in the shade blueberry and the other in the shade belly buffet and I have two options I could either just find some pattern from the Kato Dama winter issue magazine or I could make my own design and I have an inspiration from my PhD major for new viewers there I completed my PhD degree last year so I am a doctor in fluid mechanics in engineering and in fluid mechanics there is a phenomenon called the Carmen Vortex street it is a phenomenon where in the fluid flow there is a solid cylinder 
and when the flow passes around the cylinder, it forms this little vortex. I'll put pictures here. And these vortex keep appearing behind the cylinder and shedding and shedding and forms this street of vertices. And that's quite a fascinating phenomenon for me and also aesthetically quite pleasing. And I'm thinking I could design a cable pattern out of the Carmen vortex, like our head could just be the cylinder object and then there's a vortex street that is forming in the front panel and then there are some other decorative cables or moss stitches otherwhere. So that's another design option and I could make a slipover version and then a sweater version of this Carmen vortex pattern and that would be really fun. <laughs> and I don't think anyone had made any sweater design based off, you know, fluid mechanics. So I don't know. Let me know in the comments what you think of my design inspiration or plans, or maybe I could just knit some beautiful patterns that's already in the Kato Dama magazine. And for my next sweater knitting plan, it's sort of in the same situation where I've already decided on the yarn but not the pattern yet. So I have bought a sweater quantity of some Chinese yarn last year. One is the Love Yarn Heartbeat in a different shade, like the gray. And then the Cloud Excellent Mohair from Bian Zhi Ren in another light gray color. I bought it last year because at that point I find myself making too many colorful sweaters. They're all like in the color, green or blue or purple or whatever, but not in a neutral color as they say it. And I just feel like I need a neutral, simple, basic sweater, so I got it. And now when I'm making my plans, I'm having two options. One is this cover pattern from the Sunny Scar magazine. This is called the Frankie Ganser. This is just a basic like raglan sweater top down with a very long twisted rib section in the sleeves and the bottom ribbing as well and i also have this gray color that is a bit darker than this one but will probably give the similar effect but i also have another design inspiration that's coming from my porcelain socks design so last year i designed a socks pattern called the Qinghua porcelain socks inspired by the traditional Chinese blue and white porcelain. All those motifs on the socks are based off traditional patterns that you can find in the Chinese porcelains. And I sort of want to adapt that into a colorwork cardigan where I put the motif on a section of the sleeves. And I also have another inspiration from a Japanese TV show that I watched on Netflix. It's called First Love. And the main character wore a beautiful blue cardigan. I'll put a picture here that gives me a similar feeling of the porcelain cardigan that I was imagining. It's just a reversed color scheme. Like I want the whole body to be light gray or white and then the color work will be in blue. But I don't know. I've already said six or seven designs previously and I don't think I can make that many designs in a year. So I have to make a selection. And I also think for a blue and white porcelain, this combination is too dark, it's too gray. I probably would need to buy like a true porcelain like white yarn for that project and uh, maybe that's for next year. And finally, the last sweater plan that I'm going to make is a Christmas sweater. And I have seen this pattern on the Sydney Scar Tema Christmas issue of their magazine. Uh, it is this one, a chunky knit sweater with a color work on the yoke. Although I couldn't find the pattern book, I managed to contact the Chinese Saniscar retailer. They have an official translation version of the pattern and they make a kit out of it with either the Saniscar original alpaca 
or set yarn or something and also their own brushed merino yarn uh, I'm going to try their brushed merino white yarn combined with uh, this ball of intense red yarn from my grandma this is a very chunky knit with 9 millimeter knitting needles so it will be quite quick I could start it in like early December and do this for a whole week and then I will have a Christmas sweater and it will also be appropriate for the Chinese New Year after that as in China we do wear a lot of red for our New Year so it's a nice plan and next chapter, I will talk about the animal friends that I'm going to make this year. If you've been with me for a while, you know that I love to knit animal friends. You can see on the back, those are three of the animal friends that I have knitted in my past year. And for this year, I'm having three more additions to my animal friend family. The first one, I'm already working on it. This is not an alpaca, <laughs> but it's actually a polar bear from the Pika Po 3 book. It is this little guy over here. Pika Po is a series of uh, crocheted animal books, and all these animals in this book are just so cute. Like, normally, I'm not attracted to the crocheted toys, like, I find they are not as smooth as the knitted animal friends but the designs from Pika Po are just like they have their own personalities I'm really enjoying this book this is my first crocheted animal and uh, I've been enjoying the making process of it I think construction wise these are easier to work with than the knitting but since I'm more familiar with knitting I'm actually doing the knitting faster than the crocheting but it's a good learning process and I'm also making the X single crochet stitch than the regular like V stitch so that according to the book this will make the fabric tighter and flatter and I think it looks quite nice and my next addition to my animal friend is another bunny so this year is the Chinese year of bunny although I've already had two bunny or rabbit animal friends I'm still going to knit a third one for this year and I selected the bunny Odile designed by Cynthia Ballet it's a pattern available on Ravelry and what draws me to this pattern is the seamless knitting method so for most of the other knitted animal friends you would knit different pieces sew them together but for the bunny Odile you are supposed to just knit the whole like skin of the rabbit all together in a row including the head, the arm and the leg and maybe even the ear I'm not sure and I think that design is just so brilliant and so convenient and I'm really looking forward to learn how to do that uh, and I've also learned that the designer Cynthia Valley has collaborated with Lind Publishing and she's gonna release a whole animal knitting book in this spring and I'm really looking forward to reading this book maybe not buying it but I think our local yarn store might stock it and I really look forward to giving it a look and then the third addition to my animal family would be this Christmas bear designed by Lovely Knit Creation also known as Ekaterina Popova this little bear and this designer is the same designer as the little bunny with the pink dress that I knitted over there and I really find the construction interesting because it had a rotatable leg and the design is really like it's so small and so cute and I think this bear features the same construction as the bunny so I've already bought the pattern last year when it was on sale so I'm looking forward to knitting it for the Christmas this year and then in this chapter I will talk about my accessory knitting plans so my first plan has already been completed this is a pair of color work mittens 
This design comes from a Japanese mitten knitting book by Japanese designer Mitten Ya. It's called Mitten and Accessories by Mitten Ya or something. And by the way, all the Japanese pattern books that I talk about in this channel are available on Etsy. And if you just search for the keywords, Japanese knitting mitten pattern books or keito dama or something i'll put the details of the name of the books below as well and if you just search them on etsy you should be able to find these patterns and even if you don't read japanese because the japanese patterns are mostly charted you will still be able to read the chart and the schematics and understand how to use it. And in my channel, I also have a series of mini lessons so that you can learn how to read the schematics and the charts. So I love all the designs from this book and I've already knitted two or three pairs of mittens out of that book already and I plan to knit one pairs of mittens every year out of that book and I've already done that for this year. Uh, the yarn I used was still the Chinese yarn. It's also the Love Yarn Heartbeat, the wool fingering weight yarn. And this brownish yarn is from my grandma's gift, so no brand. And I have started biking this year since I don't have the student's uh, bus pass anymore and this could keep my hand warm when I'm biking in the winter and it was knitted on two millimeter needles so it's quite a tight fabric and I'm already sweating in this so here's my first accessory finish objects slash plan this year and my second plans are some scarves it's from this Antelac knitting book by Toshio Kishida and I've got the book some point last year because I wanted to learn how to do Antelac knitting because it looks really nice with these little diamond shaped squared putting together and you can also play with color and combine the different colors of scraps of yarn together and speaking of that I do have a lot of scraps from my wall garden pullover. So here are all the leftover yarns from my wall garden pullover and they are really colorful. And I plan to make two scarves out of the book. First one is just a plain interlock scarf with the stockinette stitch. This one was knitted with like fingering weight yarn on a very tight gauge but the leftover yarn I had was in worsted weight so I will just like follow the technique and then for a scarf the gauge really doesn't matter I could just make a wider scarf or shorter just depending on how much yarn I have and I could have some fun combining all these colors that I had from the wall garden project and another design that I want to make is this one it is a Celtic cable pattern interlock scarf it is also the one on the bottom cover page and in this pattern it calls for the soft Donegal tweed yarn and lucky for me in my wall garden pullover the main color of yarn are the soft Donegal so I do have quite a few of this soft Donegal yarn left and then combining with some other worsted weight yarn that I have in stash, I could make that Celtic cable scarf as well. And then I have some sock knitting plan. So I got some Chinese socks yarn as well. Uh, this is the Love Yarn Zhizu or Satisfaction, that's what they call it. It is just a fingering weight plain color socks yarn and for this white one i have two balls and i'm going to knit the sock pattern in the 2202 it is a lace socks with a frills uh, edging i haven't knitted any of the lace pattern socks yet so i really look forward to trying that and then another plan i had two balls of this uh, Satisfaction Socks yarn and I haven't decided on the pattern yet but I know I'm going to knit one design from the 52 weeks of socks 
I have picked four patterns that I want to knit and I really would appreciate your help for choosing one of them. So if you'd like, please tell me uh, which one you think would work best with that green color yarn. I'll show you my number one choice would be the Linea of their number 12 pattern design with a diamond cable pattern on the instep. And design number two is the, their 16th design. I don't know how to pronounce it, but it features a spiral patch of a beautiful lace pattern. There is another image on the second page. And then my choice number three would be their number 25 design, the lot sock with some simple lace design on the two sides of the sock. I've seen a few podcasters knitting this pattern and I think it looks quite classic. And then the fourth choice would be their 41st design, Erica, with the leafy kind of cable lacy pattern on the instep, which I think also works quite well with the green color. So let me know which you think would work best and, and then I will finally knit a pair of socks out of this book. And finally for my sock knitting plan is regarding one of my own designs. Uh, so this is my recent finished object. This is just a plain pair of stockinette socks knitted from toe up using my own socks pattern, the no frills toe up socks. And that pattern is designed for the fingering weight socks yarn. But I also intend to expand the gauge so that I could apply the pattern for DK weight yarn as well. And I'd really like to make that design at some point in the future this year. And next one, I have a bag making plan. And that's from this Japanese pattern book by Ronique. It's a raffia crocheted bag pattern. And this is like those choose your own pattern design books. It gives you a lot of options for these patterns on the side of the bag and the different bottom panels and the different handles so that you can freely combine them to your likings. And I've also got the yarn already last year, which was the Hui Cai yarn. And I really want to try raffia yarn. I've never done that. And I really like the looks of the crocheted bags from raffia. And they have a lot of uh, examples and a lot of random different patterns. But I just think the cover option is already quite cute. I do want to make like a round bottom kind of bag and I think they can hold a lot of stuff and in summer I can like, put my water bottle and my knitting project in such like a round bucket shaped bag and then bike to work at the yarn shop and that is really like a dream life. So I've got four balls of this yarn and I'll see how big a bucket bag I can make out of it. And I've also had another types of raffia but not really raffia yarn. It's from the Love Yarn Company. This is more like a viscose or washi paper type of yarn. It feels really like fibers from papers. I'm not sure if it can be submerged in water, but on the carrying label, it seems like you can submerge it in water. And I got two balls of this and I want to make like a straw hat. I haven't decided on the pattern yet. I think I will just make a plain one, but I've already bought a roll of black ribbons that I'm going to use it to decorate around my straw hat. So we'll see how I manage to do that in summer. And next one, I am going to knit the uh, basic bra by Naked Knits. I got the pattern last year when it was on sale as well. It's just a basic 
bra, as the name indicated. It should be a fairly quick knit, and it would be like a very useful piece in summer. And I have the yarn already. These are some leftover China hemp yarn, also from the Love Yarn Company. The type is called Su Yu. I used this yarn last year for my Provence top and my June top light. It feels really cool, but also soft to the touch. So I think it would be a nice yarn to be made into uh, underwear. And then my last accessory plan is the Bobley hat. It was the 2020 Shetland Wool Week free pattern. And the yarn I'm going to use are the Let Slopey yarn uh, from my Harbin sweater project. So I have designed and released my Harbin sweater pattern last week. And these are the leftovers from that project. There are these four colors used for the sweater, but I was debating over two shades of brown. So I bought another shade of brown and ended up not using it. So I have a whole ball of this brown that could be applied to the bobbly hat as the like bottom part of that hat. And then the green, the white and blue uh, works quite well with the pattern. Well, I don't have enough of those, but I do have a lot of random uh, leftover yarns from other projects that I can combine together to form that project. Finally, in the last chapter, I will chat about my sewing plan. I only got into sewing very recently. I took my first sewing class last November, and then recently I got my sewing machine. I got the Juki 80. And for sewing, I got two Japanese sewing books as well. This one is the Clean and Natural, and this one is making and styling book. Uh, well, their Japanese name is a bit more descriptive. I will put the Japanese name of these books below as well so that you can search for it. And I'm going to make some easy skirts as my first step. I really like this book because it rated all the patterns with stars. So I could start with the patterns with one star and then moving on to the more complicated patterns. And the pattern I selected first is this uh, simple straight A-line skirt pattern with a bow tie in the front. And I've read the pattern, it seems quite simple. You just cut a rectangle on the fabric and then put in the elastic and then make this bow tie. And that's pretty much it. I've ordered the fabric from China as well because it's really affordable and there's really a lot of options. The only downside is, of course, I could not touch it. But with $2 per meter of fabric, like what complaint would you make? And then I've se selected another pattern from this book, which is this uh, three tier pleat skirt. And I really love this type of fabric already. I ordered a similar fabric from China online as well. It looks like this. It's also a 100% cotton fabric. I think it will be a good starting point for me to learn how to make these slightly more complicated skirts. And then if these are successful, I could move on to like dresses and shirts. Some designs I love from the book was this one from the other book. Like I like these straight pants. Like even these plain shirts look quite nice to me. So we'll see. So that will be everything for my 2023 make plans. I hope you have enjoyed it. And if some of these projects inspired you to try Japanese patterns or Norwegian Sandy's garn patterns, please do let me know. And then we could start doing the Japanese knit along together as well this year. And if you enjoy my content, please consider donating on my Ko-fi, ko-fi.com slash seedlingstitch. And on the service tab of my Ko-fi page, I'm also offering a private Japanese pattern translation help. So if you own any Japanese pattern and had trouble understanding it, I could annotate the pattern PDF for you or just answer a few quick questions on a specific section of the pattern and feel free to email me if you find yourself in a situation where you need some help with the translation. As always, in the last of my podcast, I would play a piece of piano and have a nice day. Happy knitting. See you next time. Bye.